Today's episode of The Mom Game is brought to you by our friends at Gateway Buick GMC at LBJ and Jupiter. I know that buying a car can be stressful, but not at Gateway because their slogan is, Gateway's got it. And just what does that mean? Well, it means Gateway's got a wide selection of new Buicks, GMCs, and GM certified used vehicles, all competitively priced. Gateway's got it. In these busy times, you want a car dealer who makes things easy and convenient. Well, guess what? Gateway's got it. When you log on to gatewaybuickgmc.com, look for the shop, click, drive button. This allows you to shop from the comfort of your home, and who doesn't want that? In fact, it's as easy as one, two, three. One, select your vehicle. Two, create your offer. Three, schedule your delivery. And on top of all this, Gateway Buick GMC offers complimentary car washes for life. So when you want a dealer who has it all, Gateway's got it. You can find them online at gatewaybuickgmc.com or shop in person at LBJ and Jupiter. GMC, we are professional grade. Experience the new Buick. And welcome to episode 174 of The Mom Game. I'm Emily Jones. She is not Julie Dobbs. <laughs> she is my friend, Chris Budden. Filling in for Julie, actually friends of both of us. She went yeah. to college with Julie. Uh, Chris, of course, of ESPN fame. We have a ton to talk about. We've had you on the show before. Um, but when Julie was going out of town, I, you were the first person I thought of. And I was like, I'm going to see if Chris will come in and co-host with Thank you. Me. I mean, you might as well take a blonde Kai Omega from Mizzou and then just plug it in this chair and it's there basically the same. And I'm a, br <laughs> I'm a brunette Kai Omega from go. Texas Tech. So yeah, we can do the secret handshake uh, in, between, in between sponsors. Um, okay, Chris, first of all, you have been ridiculously busy. Yeah. I feel like every time I turned on my TV for a while, I saw your bright, shiny face. It makes me so happy and so proud. Tell me what you've been up to and how you're doing. Yeah, uh, this is uh, my off season, which is weird to say because Big 12 Media Days is this week and then there's Little League Softball World Series and there's radio, so it never really ends. Um, I have been on the end of College World Series, College Baseball, which honestly is my favorite event that we cover. If you've never been to Omaha and been to the College World Series, it's 14 days, that entire city takes over. The fact that you have... LSU fans there and Florida fans and like they're all staying at our hotel so you're going to your production meeting at 8 a.m. and you know there's your LSU Tiger fan sitting there with a martini at 8 30 in the morning and it's, ju it's just a wild scene the way that that entire community takes over but it's funny because like I cover basketball or I cover football and then that goes right into basketball literally like the day after the national championship for football I took a red eye to get to Lawrence Kansas to cover hoops then I cover hoops and then I get like a week off and then starts the postseason for college baseball. And I remember telling my husband, I just need in three more weeks, just like after three more weeks, it'll be crazy. And he's like, you say that all the time. And so I was like, three more weeks. And then so then we get back and it's like the end of Omaha. And then I'm like, oh, I have Big 12 Media Days and Little League Softball World Series and radio every day. So really, like it never ends. But at least like the traveling is at a standstill for the time being. Right. And so, but uh, let's be real. Like, it, it, there have been layoffs left and right yeah. everywhere, not just at ESPN. So the fact that you do have a job has got to be awesome. Yeah. And it's one of those things where it's like, you also can't say no, right? But like, you start seeing this, this whole industry is changing. And, you know, you go back to last Friday, and this is the third round of layoffs that I've witnessed at ESPN. And it is a crazy deal because it's not like you get an email that says, here's the list of names. It's the way that our business is covered in social media. You're look, scrolling through Twitter to find out which one of your friends and like wondering, am I going to get a phone call from an 860 area code? And if so, like I'm pushing decline, like you just, and, and most of those people didn't know. And so, yeah, I mean, like I was super happy to be safe, but then you're like, I can't say no to anything because if you do, and it's just, it's kind of the the culture of our business. Um, you know, you, you're in it enough that you can kind of then say like, hey, I, I need a break. I need this. And they've started to understand some of that. Um, but you, it's also like, I also love my job. I also love what I do. So there's not a lot of things that I want to turn down. Right. Um, but there does need to be a season of which I can be home with my kids when they're not at camp and they're not at school. And my daughter's not saying to me, mommy, are you leaving tomorrow? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, th then I could say, no, mommy's not leaving for a month. Right. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> you talk about, you know, your career. I mean, it's been a really a, a long, how long have you been doing this? 
20? Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, almost two decades now. But yeah. that's so crazy. It makes me <laughs> so dang old. Uh, oh, I mean, 25 over here, honey. Like, you're, you still got some catching yeah, up to do. Um, but to be in the position that you are, it's so fun for me as your friend to see you doing these big events. I mean, the College World Series is a big event. You, There was another thing you did. I was at the Final Four. Yeah. I was at the National Championship for college football. And it's like, you know, like you start this career, like we kind of, our paths are similar in yeah. terms of starting local news. And you're like, this is what I want to do. But when we started, there weren't that many women. And so the idea of like what could be possible, I didn't even know. I just knew like, Hey, I wanted to get into sideline reporting. I wanted to be able to do something that allowed me to do interviews. Like, that's my favorite part of the job. And then it just became, you know, what's the next thing and what's the next thing? And then you sit back and you're like, wow, the past year I was at the national championship for football and I was at the final four and I was at the college world series and like all of the things that I thought were possible in my brain, you like you then realize that you're doing. Uh, and sometimes I try and remind myself every day, like, it's tiring, you know, you, I have a four and a seven year old and a husband at home and you're doing all those things and the work on top of it and the studying and I do radio of like, and remember like to enjoy what it is because this right. is always what you wanted to do. And while it's tiring and can sometimes be a rat race, you have to say like, and be where your feet are and enjoy because this is always what you wanted to do. And now you're there. Yeah. Well, and I think you do a really, I feel like you do a really good job of that. Like, I feel like, you know, you know, you're able to, to balance those things. And that's one of the hardest things I feel like as a, as a mom in this industry is having to balance it. But we were talking before we started taping about re-entry. I mean, and you're gone for 16 days to the college world series in Omaha. And then, so your husband is managing everything. So, okay. I'm curious about this before we get to what we were talking about, about re-entry. So do you, do you out like lay everything out for him? Like, as far as like, Here's what the kid, do you have a list of here's what the kids have, here's what they need to be doing, set up babysitters, yes. all that. Okay. Yes. Same. So, I mean, like, yeah. there, there's a lovely app that everything is color coded in the okay. calendar for, okay? February 1st, all of the summer camps are lined up for the, like, you know, like, otherwise they're going to be full and I got to know that, like, right. they have things taken care of during the weeks that I'm gone. We had to be very big on planning and communication. I mean, I'm not laying out their clothes. Right. When he's home, like he does the grocery shopping most of the time anyways. And so we've kind of figured out a balance that way. It was funny. Like we were talking, he was like, well, how can I take things off your plate? And you're like, you're a little bit like me. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm like control freak. And I was like, nothing, you can't. And he's like, you need to let me take some things off your plate. And so I was like, he's like, how about I do the kids laundry? And I was like, done. I, I don't want to do that anyway. I still do my own laundry. But that was, he was like, how about I have the Amazon password? I was like, not giving that up. Oh, okay. no. So, but like, you know, like you have to be okay with like taking some of the control and yeah. some of the things. So the laundry and the grocery shopping took a lot off my plate. Okay. Uh, but I do, I still like, listen, I'm the one that, that manages the babysitters and the camps and the sports. He takes them to a lot of them when I'm gone, but I'm still the one that like, manages the kids calendar and the logistics sort of yeah. by the way you like you said the word balance i find that word to be a bunch of baloney it is it it's is. different for every person yeah like i miss a lot of baseball games for my kids i miss a lot and for someone else that might not be balanced for me this is what works and some days it doesn't and some days it does and you just at the end of the day hope your kids are alive and happy and well fed yeah. and you know are in their bed on time well and that's what we i mean we had that conversation so many times about you know it's always and it's always mom they want mom there yeah. mom to be there mom where you know and i'm like and I told them very early on, like when they started playing sports and I was starting to miss things, they're like, there's always going to be someone there for you. Yeah. It may not always be me. And it sometimes, it may not always be daddy, but it might, it will be a grandparent or an aunt or someone is going to be there to mm -hmm. cheer you on. It, it, But it can't always be mommy. It yeah. just can't. And so I think when, in the older your kids get and yours are seven and four, the more they realize and honestly, the more they appreciate. Mm -hmm. um, because there was times when... You know, we have a conversation every off season about is mommy going back to work? And we talk about it as a family and used to, they used to, you know, kind of not lobby for me to, you know, but they, they wanted me to be around more and all that kind of stuff. And now it's like, they're proud. Mm -hmm. They're old enough to appreciate what, what mom does. And, you know, not just the, you know, the Rangers thing, but the, the other things they do, they see me working hard. And I, I feel like that, that to me, that's important, yeah. you know, and I, and that's not saying anything against moms who stay at home. 
because to me that is way harder yeah. than anything. I don't want to do, do that. I can't no, do that. I can't. <laughs> no. it's, I'm not no. wired that no, way. No. But I absolutely admire and appreciate yeah. and respect those moms that are, you know, the the PTA presidents and the, that are organizing all the things, activities at school and that are at every single thing. Yeah. And those are the moms that I have to call on sometimes. Like, can you grab Hattie and take her? I mean, I have a friend, Sarah, um, and she. Uh, it's all, I always know I can call her because she is not going to miss anything. Yeah. And so I can always say, Sarah, can you help me with Hattie? Do this and do that. And she's always, she always says yes. And she's always super gracious. And I'm very grateful for friends like that, 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 that is their, that's their thing. And so I don't, I think, I hope that, that there's like a mutual appreciation on both sides yeah. of, you know, and I, you know, cause I, there are some moms that are at everything that judge other moms mm-hmm. that aren't at everything. Yeah. And they think that we're not as good a moms because we're not making that the top priority all of the time. Which is why you have to find your right circle of friends. No it's, doubt. It's 99% of the reason that we moved back to Texas, we were in California, was A, like my parents lived here, we live a mile from my parents, but they're also older and they go on vacation, and so it's not like they're still here all the time, but they help a significant amount, of, and my in-laws are here, but also like the people here. And it took a while to find the group of friends that wasn't like, you know, look at that chick that she's gone all the time and she's never at her kids' things because there are those segments of people. And you learn very quickly that those are not the people that you want to surround yourself with. One, we're busy all the time. So if I'm going to commit to having time for my friends, they're going to be people that are worth spending my time around. Uh, but when you do find those people, they're your village. And, you know, I have people that that I work with, they're like, man, I wish I lived around family. And I'm like, but even if I didn't have my family here, we found a village of friends. Yeah. And you go to a baseball game and, you know, for as much as I love my husband, he's not always sending me the videos, you know, oh. like, the, the moms are the ones, <laughs> yes. right? Like you're yeah. a swim team. Like here's the video of Jace finishing the race yeah. and here's this. And like, they don't realize how much those things mean and how much it means that like you thought of me and that you're not judging me for not being there. Be like, well, I'm not saying this. She should have been here. Right. Right. No, that's a, an excellent point. And I, it, it is so important to find, like you said, your village. And I think it's important for dudes too, you yeah. know, not even necessarily as much with kids, but you know, guys being able to find people that they're comfortable talking about stuff with. I mean, I just feel like dudes don't talk enough about stuff. Yeah. That's the, the most generic statement ever. <laughs> I just don't feel like dudes talk about stuff enough. Yeah. Um, because, I, I, you know, and so you find, I think it's important for men especially to find friends that they're able to kind of let their guard down with, you know? Yeah. And I, I think it's probably harder for men than it is for women just because there is that whole stereotype of, you know, tough bro dude can't talk about feelings and yeah. shit like that. Um, so yeah. Especially I think- since I'm gone. Like for him to have adult yep. time, because it is like, listen, our jobs are fun and we are around adults all the time. Yep. And when you're the one taking care of the kids, it becomes like, I haven't talked to an adult in two weeks. Yeah. You know? So it is important to like be able to have that. So then when I come home, I'm like, go play pickleball, go play on a softball, like do whatever you want. Cause I understand that like, I, Yes, I am working, but I also get to have adult time and conversations right. beyond, you know, my seven-year-old and his Pokemon cards. Yeah, for sure. Um, I know I that same way with Mike. Like, I'll he'll he just texted me yesterday. It was like, is it okay? If our kids are at camp for two weeks. I mean, I'm like, what? We're we're, in, I I cannot two, wait till sleepaway weeks. camp age. Okay, so and well, why are you here and not on a vacation? Well, okay, so great question. So I dropped him off. For, so funny. So I dropped him off for two weeks. Uh, we dropped him off on Sunday. We Everything was fine. A little teary from the kids and a little teary from me. I got home. Everything's fine. I went and sat on the couch. I poured a glass of wine and I just started bawling. <laughs> and my husband was like, what are you doing? Yeah. yeah. So I text my village. I text my girls. And I'm like, y'all, I, I, I've been home for 20 minutes and I'm cr- I can't stop crying. And they're like, holy fuck, what is wrong with you? And I'm like, I don't know. Who am I? What is happening? And they're like, how many glasses of wine have you had? And I'm like, this is my first one. I can't even like, blame it on that. I know. And they're like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, so anyway, it's crazy how, you know, the just this whole thing is just a fucking mystery. And you yeah. don't ever know what's going to pop up around the corner. Like I was so like fist pumped, so excited to drop my kids off. And then I get home yeah. and I start bawling because I miss them. Yeah, I do that all the time. Like when I leave on a trip, I'll be like, I'll be at the, I can't wait to go. I can't wait to go. I'm at the airport and I'm like... 
why am I doing this? And then you get on the plane and, and you like, fine. you know that it yeah. goes away. And then once you kind of get into the mode, funny story. So after we had my daughter, like we knew that, that we wanted to, we had a boy and a girl and we were closing up shop. And so my husband, uh, like had planned a vasectomy and my mom calls and she was like, I can't believe you're doing this. And I was like, why? And she was like, what if something happens to Landon? <gasps> And I was like, why would you? I'm on a plane, not even around my kid. Why would you say that? And I was like, first of all, I'm not going to replace her. I'm also not going to be pregnant again. I'll adopt if I did have to replace her. And so I call my husband and because like the appointment was the next day. And he was like, come home and be around your kids for 10 minutes. And then you'll understand why we're going to go do this. Right. Yeah. Oh, my God. What if something <laughs> happened to her? Oh, thanks, Mom. Thanks. Oh, geez. Um, okay. I want to get into a lot of different things. We are going to do some sportsy stuff. Um, we got to get some sponsor reads in. I know you're very familiar since you're a big radio star <laughs> as well. Uh, we're going to talk sports courts, get into sports courts. That is brought to us by our friends at Bottle Rover, which you can save time and energy and gas by getting your drinks delivered to your door for free with Bottle Rover. $50 minimum order, which is not hard to do. Just download the app bottlerover.com. Download the app from the app store. It's a cute little dog logo. They're awesome to deal with um, because summer is here. We do not want to get out in the heat. We don't want the whip of going to a liquor store. So all you got to do is build your cart. I did this just a couple weeks ago when I had family in town, 20 year old niece, 21 year old niece. She's 20, but 21 year old niece uh, wanted some of the drinks that we just don't keep stocked at our house, like the high noons and the white claws and the, she got some like Sonic flavored shit. And I was like, whatever. So I just told her, put it in the cart, tell me what you want. And then it was delivered to my door. Uh, it's amazing service. It's awesome. It saves you a trip to the liquor store. Time, gas, energy, all that stuff. It will save you. So don't forget $50 or more is free delivery. So download the Bottle Rover app right now, build a cart, and let Bottle Rover fetch your drinks for free. Just a $50 minimum, BottleRover.com, download the Bottle Rover app. All right. Thank you to Bottle Rover. Let's get into some sportsy stuff. Um, did you watch the Home Run Derby? Uh, I watched the beginning of it. I was really kind of like rooting for Mookie Betts because his okay. wife had told him he wasn't going to do the Home Run Derby. Okay. And I then know the story. Yeah. His wife was like, you got to do it. And he's like, I'm small. I'm not going to win. And his wife was like, you've done everything else. You got to do this. So I was like kind of rooting for him. Like, hey, maybe the wife's like a little yes. push. And she was like there with her baby. And then he didn't, you know, he didn't obviously put up 41 freaking yeah. home runs. It was unbelievable. Yeah. he uh, I, He's so likable. I've never met him. But he does seem like a super likable human being. Yeah. Mookie Betts does. Um, I, I, of course, was rooting for Adolis Garcia. Yeah. Because of uh, the Rangers connection, obviously. Um, and it looked like he, Tony Beasley was having a little bit of a hard time throwing oh, good pitches. Didn't it? Um, there, there was a change in pitcher. Was that the deal? Or that was Juan Soto that had the change in pitcher. Yeah. That no, he before. brought Tony he with did, him. Okay. And I remember, but uh, Tony also threw to Joey Gallo a few years ago when he did it. And I remember Joe, uh, him having issues. I think Beast just gets really nervous. Okay. You know what's so funny is I've always said that like the hardest and most nerve wracking job uh, would be coach pitch. Yes. Baseball. Yes. And you're the pitcher. And you're the pitcher. Yeah. Because A, these kids don't know what not to swing at. And then we're at a game the other day and like the coach plunks three kids <laughs> and everyone's going, <laughs> and I'm like, that would be the worst job. Oh yeah. Also being on like ESPN having, cause you only get a s two minutes yeah. to hit 40 some odd home runs. It's insanity. And if you are a little bit off the plate, like you screw your guy. Right. I know. I know. The, no, I agree on the coach pitch thing. Like, cause I, I coach Hattie softball team and the first, I'm the head coach, but I'm like, there's what I will not, no. will not. Uh, that's, <laughs> it's so that stressful. No. no. And so, yeah, I poor bees. I, I don't know. I mean, and I can't, I, I know, I know. I was like, I did a radio interview this morning and they were talking about it. I was like, I love Tony Beasley. Please be nice to him. But By I, the way, I love who you guys got in the draft. Wyatt Langford. Oh, Florida. Okay. Tell yeah. me about him. Great dude. Uh, kind of quiet. Uh, came into Florida. I think got like four at bats his freshman year and then like just developed himself at Omaha, hit the furthest home run that's ever been hit there, 456 feet. Uh, he's a dude. And honestly, before Omaha, 
who was probably predicted to be number one, and then Paul Skeens, who went overall number one to Pittsburgh, just was lights out, and they ended up taking the picture, and then Dylan Cruz goes too, but I really like who you guys got. Yeah, I know. I'm super – I think they <laughs> they were shocked he was there. Yeah. Um, super excited for, you know – and I think it'll be – uh, like a relatively quick transition, it yeah. sounds like. I hope so. I was having this conversation on the radio about the college kids and the the rise to the majors. Yeah. Like those three guys that you saw that that there was a high school kid that went three, but between Dylan Cruz, Paul Skeens, and Wyatt Langford, like the the gap between being in the farm system will be so much shorter. Like yeah. Paul Skeens will be in a major league game next year, and that's really good for major league baseball because. We had three and a half million people watch the College World Series, and you fall in love with these stars, and then they disappear for years. Yeah. And so to be able to then see them, you know, after a year or two, be able to be in the major leagues, I think is really good for baseball in general. Yeah, for sure. And I think it's too, it's a, it's a testament to kids going to college. Yeah. I mean, I know the Rangers have been on a heavy run of with their top picks taking Yeah, they got Ryder, they got Kumar Rocker. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. They, I mean, I think that, that there's something to be said for that as far as the development, development. is yeah. concerned, for sure. Um, are you going to watch the All-Star game? This will air after the All-Star game, but are you going to watch it? Maybe. I'll watch the first couple yeah. of innings because of the Rangers. Yeah. I'm yeah. always kind of like, it's, I'm all, same way for all sports All-Star events. I know. This like, is the yeah. best of it all is, of them. It is, it is. But it's kind of a really low bar. Yeah. But I'm excited because next year, the All-Star game is here. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that'll be cool. So you won't actually get a break. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, and I'm definitely not retiring after this year because I'm like, I'm coming back for the yeah. All-Star game and it's Adrian Beltre's first oh, yeah. uh, year of eligibility for the Hall of Fame. I think he's going to be a yeah. first ballot Hall of Famer. Um, I've been to one and that. I've been to a home run derby. Home run derbies to go to are a lot of fun. Okay. Like the energy is very, very cool. Yeah. I yeah. think I'll probably just soak it all in yeah. next year and then maybe I'll retire after that. Um, okay, I did want to, back to, sorry, back to the re We never yeah. got to re-entry. Re-entry. Yes. So when you're gone, we're just hopping all around. <laughs> um, so when you're, when you're gone, like, so for me, re-entry was, I mean, now I don't go on long road trips starting this season. This is the first season I haven't gone on a long road trip. But when I was going on like three city trips, the re-entry was, first of all, don't, don't you, when you're on the road for that amount of time, like you start, I start feeling like I'm not even normal. Like mm-hmm. this isn't. With, like, what is my life? What, like, yeah, who, who, I'm living an alternative life. Who am I? Yeah. Like, oh, there, oh, there's a family there at home. <laughs> I'm like, sleeping in. Like, I'm what, working out. You, what are we doing? Like, what are we doing? Like, who it's, am I? Where do I belong? Yes. You just get in this, like, weird twilight zone yeah. to where it's like, am I ever going to be normal again? Yeah. And then you come home and then reality and your family just slap you right, right. in the face. And they're like, fucking <laughs> welcome home. <laughs> Why are you here? We've been doing a lot of shit without You're you. Messing all this shit up. Okay, That's so how I feel. Yeah. So yeah. what is it like when you come? Yeah. So when you come home for sixteen days on the road, yeah. what what is? Well, it's hard because it's a push and pull. Because during football season, I'm only gone Friday to Saturday, so still I'm kind of like the primary person at home. My husband also works; he's a real estate agent, so it's not like he's a stay at home dad. Um, but during during there's a couple long road trips in basketball, like for the Big Twelve tournament. That's seven days. But Omaha is 14 days on the road. It's also like, before that, I was home two days, gone five. Home two days, gone five. So it's really like an entire month where I'm only home for four days. So it's definitely, he's the primary caretaker. And he actually likes it when I'm gone for longer periods of time because he's very like, you know, he likes a system and he likes his way. We wake up and we have, you know, spinach smoothies and we do this and this and this. And whereas I'm, oh, when spinach I spinach smoothies, I know. So he's very hardcore. Whereas I'm like, I'll come home and be like, you know, my daughter's like, can I have Fruit Loops? And I'm like, sure. And he's like, we don't do Fruit Loops in the morning. And I'm like, oh, okay. So, like, you know, there's just like, when you get back home, it's like walking on eggshells. I'm like, I don't want to mess anything up. I know you got your own groove going on. Let me just like figure out where I fit in here. And, you know, it's a tough adjustment because he's like, now you're invading my space. Like, yeah. I was here. I didn't have to sleep next to a human being for 14 days, which also becomes hard. Like you live in a hotel for 14 days and you're like, now I got to be, try and fall asleep next to this person that snores. I was yes. in complete silence for a while. It was very nice. Yeah. Why are people supposed to sleep in the same bed? I, I mean, you get done what needs to be done in bed. Do we, do we really need to do we need the sleep, sleep part together? of it? Yeah. No, it's a great point. My grandparents on my mom's side, they from the time like I I never knew them to sleep in the same room. 
Oh, they always funny. had separate rooms. And I thought that was so <laughs> weird growing up. And now I'm like, wow, they had it figured out so early. Yeah. Like, because I mean, I'm not in I I'm not a I'm, snuggler. No. No. Like it's like you're hot. Like <laughs> yeah. ugh, you're you so took all the com- hot. took uh. all the comforters and now you're snoring. And then but again, like if that's all you know, that's fine. You get used to it. But then you're like 14 days on the road and like complete silence and like the bed to yourself and I can put the AC at whatever oh, I whatever. want. And then you're like, now you I can have to watch go- whatever you want on TV. <laughs> right. We can't I Mike and I cannot we can't find a show. Like we oh, can't really? find a show to watch. Did you watch <laughs> American Gladiators growing up? Yes, okay. I did. There's a Netflix docu-series. That's what we've done recently. Okay. On the start and finish of American Gladiators. It's I really watched good. that religiously. Yes, watch it. Okay, so there's yeah. one. Because there's he, one. I call him shoot 'em ups He watched shoot 'em up shows. <laughs> like everything. And I'm like, how is this relaxing? Do you like, he's in bed and like, it's like. And I'm like, oh, I can hear it in the living room. And he's like, you want to watch a show with me? And I'm like, what are we watching? Shoot 'em ups? And he's like, Jack Ryan. I'm like, it's, I'm pretty. I, okay, I do like that one. Is it shoot 'em up? Yeah. Jack no, Ryan. I mean, it's not like as. He's like, it's it's a. Kind of like know. Homeland. Our problem is, is that when Mario gets on a thing, like, then he wants to stay up till 2 a.m. watching. Okay. And I'm like, I can't do that. And then he'll, then he'll be like, well, we have to finish because you're going to go on the road. Yeah. And I'm like. He, he just, like, will become, like, obsessed with the series and will binge and we'll have to go, go, yeah. go. And I'm like, then I don't want to start it. If right. this is what it's going to be, then I don't want to start it. And then he's like, then I'm going to watch it when you're gone. Right. We, see, we can't, yeah, we can't find, we can't find one. We did, we did Yellowstone, which we yeah, did together. Yeah, we did that. And then I went out have on it. Have you done Succession? I did Succession by myself. He couldn't get into it. Oh. And then I tried The Bear and that. Oh, I've heard about that one. It's, I, I, I don't get it. And I care. I, and now I'm just watching it to watch. Cause yeah. also too weird about me. I can't fall asleep. Just darkness. Like I have to be watching something. <laughs> and then inevitably I'm like, so we've got a giant TV in our room, but Mike goes to yeah. bed at like eight 30. I'm not wired that way. It's like 10 30, 11 yeah. is when I go 8:30? to bed. Thirty. He gets in bed at eight. We don't really like eat till like eight. Oh, we eat. We eat at, like, five. <laughs> like, well, I'll cook dinner. Like, I'll start cooking dinner when the kids get home from school. But see, like, we Boy. do two different dinners. Like, my kids are also young, and they don't really eat what we eat. Right. And so, so you're doing two Sometimes separate. I just, yeah, I want to eat in so silence. So are you cooking for two? Yeah, sometimes I cook for three because my husband doesn't eat vegetables. <laughs> oh, my God. Wait, just period? Just no vegetables? A Caesar salad. Oh, that's... Okay. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Or he'll say a broccoli and a brown sauce. Listen, like broccoli my, and a brown sauce. Like a Chinese brown, like a Chinese broccoli. <laughs> yes. So basically, listen, like my kids aren't gonna eat salmon. They don't really right. eat steak. They'll eat chicken if we make chicken. But so I mainly make Mario and myself our own meal, and I make the kids their own meal that I know that like at least it's not gonna go in the trash. Okay. And then sometimes I just like having a meal in quiet. Yeah. And not the chaos. So we'll sit with them while they eat. And but then, then I'll we'll go to bed and then I'll eat later just to like be able to enjoy a meal without kids. Four year old girls are a oh, yeah. lot. Mm-hmm. And yeah. it's like having a hostage takedown like negotiation every day. Yeah. So it, sometimes I just want to enjoy a meal after she goes to bed. Yeah. I, t- I tell people that all the time. Like Hattie is going, to, she's going to be like a, some sort of like a, a hostage nego- negotiator. Yeah. Like, or she better be like a Fortune 500 like CEO. I'm not putting up with this for her just to right. not do anything. <laughs> she, she better make me rich when I'm old, damn it. I met my parents' house the other day and I apologized. And I was like, sorry, she's being a bitch. I don't know if we're allowed to say that on no, the you're show. Okay. absolutely allowed to uh, And they go, what do you mean? And I go, she's being terrible. And they go, what do you think you were like? And I was like, no, 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 I was a good kid. Like, I was a rule follower. I got straight A's. They go, yeah, but that doesn't mean you weren't bossy. They go, what do you think strong, independent women were like at four years old? Pushovers? (laughs) And I was like, good point. I just gave birth to myself. Fair point. Yeah. And I I feel like that's the same with me. Like, I'm just like, I I deserve all of this. Like, my dad, before he died, would tell me that. Like, whatever you get, you deserve. (laughs) Just so you know. I mean, my sister is like this angel on earth. Like everyone loves her. No one has a bad thing to say about her. She's so sweet all the time. It's exhausting. And then there was me. Yeah. That was just like this bossy, bitchy, whatever. Which kind of is the same now. <laughs> See, when, with boys, when I when Jace turned four, it was new corner. Like two and three was rough, yeah. and then four was a new corner. 
Uh, I now have dubbed, you know, there's like the terrible twos, the teenager threes or whatever. It's the fuck you fours. Oh. That's where we are. You're in the fuck you fours. Yeah. So what's the biggest, is she just, everything is. She's just bossy and like bosses her brother around or like he makes a Lego tower. She goes in, knocks it over, runs out. She's just like, this is what I want to wear today. I want to wear shorts and they have to be pink. And I would like, if it's not clean, you better wash it because this is what I want to wear. She is a bitch. She is. She's a bitch. I know. I remember. But then other times she's like super, super sweet. Oh, yeah, and yeah, I'm yeah. like, who, I course. don't know which one I'm going to get today. I know. I remember like I was, when I was writing a blog, um, Back in the day, and I remember I called. I like, blog back in the day. I remember when that was. A that was. It took me so much energy. I'm like I can't blog. I can't even fucking write an email right now. Like, please don't ask me to write a blog. Yeah. Um, but I did blog for a while, and I remember um, I like I called my kids assholes in the blog. And oh, like, and someone got so mad. No, Michael they? Young texted me. He's like, "You cannot call your kids assholes." I was like, "But they, they are, are assholes." Yes. I was like, "I can absolutely call my kids assholes because it's the truth." He's yeah. like, "But you can't say that in a blog." I'm like, "I yeah, no." <laughs> like, have we met there? <laughs> yes, have you met me? <laughs> Pretty much say whatever. <laughs> um, but yeah, I was like, "No, they're assholes." They can. Yeah. I mean, I love them. Yeah. I love them with all my heart. But they can be giant assholes. Yeah, Landon can be a very big bitch. Other days, she's like, we call her little mama because she's also a caretaker okay um but then there's some there's other times it's just like you don't know what you're gonna get and it is her way or the freaking highway the fuck you fours that is amazing that's gonna we're gonna start that the (laughs) terrible twos and the fuck you fours that's amazing um okay let's get to a little bit of news in the tmg news desk which is brought to us by texas fat loss i obviously cannot speak to texas fat loss as well as julie has can because she has experienced this program firsthand and has seen the results. She is currently lounging, probably in a bikini, showing off her abs and stuff because of all the great work um, that she's done with Texas Fat Loss. Basically, there is uh, you're losing weight. Uh, there's no exercise required, no counting points or calories, no prepackaged meals, bars, or shakes. Um, there's a website where you can track all your information. Dr. Nick is apparently the bomb.com, according to Julie. Um, you can reach him at 972-845-1010, go to texasfatloss.com, talk to Dr. Nick, see if he can put you on the same program as Julie was on and Julie continues to be on, um, to get her down and bikini ready for Hawaii. So Dr. Nick, oh gosh, Ponomarenko, this is that, sorry, Dr. Nick, uh, results may vary. Uh, for the Mom Game podcast, there is a special number where you can call 972-845-5050. So either number will work, the one I gave you first or the one I gave you second, 972-845-1010 or 5050. Either way, anyone works. Just be sure to tell them the Mom Game and Julie Dobbs sent you to Texas Fat Loss. Thanks, y'all. Um, okay, <laughs> one of the big items in the news lately, which I'm sure you're pretty well versed on because um, of your involvement with college football, this Northwestern Mm -hmm. hazing thing. So Pat Fitzgerald, who's been the coach there for how many years? 17 years. 17 years. And And an alumni. Yeah. Yeah. And a huge, like, I mean, a big big, star. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So (laughs) he gets fired after initially just being suspended for two weeks in the middle of the summer, which seemed a little sus, as Hattie would say. Um, after these hazing incidents, what was your reaction to the firing this week? Yeah, it was kind of crazy just because the story was developing every hour. Um, and as people who studied journalism in college, like it was a student newspaper that basically ended up getting all the details that led to his eventual firing. Um, like the hazing allegations came out Friday. You didn't know exactly what it was. So you think like, you know, it's just like all of that exists in a locker room. And in, in, in some way, shape, or form, not to the extent of the details that came out. Right. So like, is this like someone carrying someone's pads or, and then when the student. Like in, like in baseball, they had the, the rookie backpack and the bullpen. bullpen. Yes. So, you know, you're wondering how bad is this? It's a two week suspension in the middle of summer. They did not re- give out any of the details in the investigation that Northwestern got. So then the student newspaper for Northwestern was able to get all of these details from several um, unnamed players, ex-players, photographs, things. And then, you know, the strange part is that, so then Saturday night, the school president says, well, now I'm going to look into whether or not two weeks was just enough. 
well, you already had all the information. Mm -hmm. So then yesterday comes around, Monday, he decides Pat Fitzgerald is going to be fired. But again, in the report, that he still says there's no more information than we knew Friday. And in that report, they said that Pat Fitzgerald did not know of any of this. That's hard to believe, given the 11 players that have come out about which, it. Which, too, and that's what Art Bryles said at Baylor. Yes. And I, Art is a friend of mine. I love Art, um, as a, I, I do, um, and I have a relationship with him. But to, it, it, I don't know if what's, which is more of an yeah. indictment, if you did know or if you didn't so know. So here's the deal. I... I actually love Pat Fitzgerald. He is one of my probably favorite coaches. He is a guy that is a family first guy. He has been there 17 years. You could not find a person that would say a bad word about him up until now. He is, like there was a thing with sideline reporters, when you had a cold game in Northwestern, he would come bring you chicken broth on the sidelines and you and him would have a conversation. You'd talk about your family, you talk about your kids. You can be that person, but also be the person that turned a blind eye to things that were going on in your locker room and be the person that needs to be held accountable because your kids are going to go to college one day. And if your kids played sports, you're going to sit in a living room with a coach and you're going to say, I'm putting my kids in your hands to protect them, to develop them, to mold them. And whether he knew or didn't know, it was his job to know what was happening in that locker room. We're not talking about things that were happening off campus. That's a completely different story. These are things that are possibly happening on the practice field, definitely happening in his locker room, and needed to be held accountable. The bad part about this on top of that is that the school president, who's been there for less than a year, tried to sweep it all under the rug on a Friday news dump, and you're at a school that's known for being one of the best journalism schools in the country, and then that student newspaper releases the details, and then he's got enough pressure to be like, well, now you got to get fired. Well, now it's going to be a whole legal mess because Pat Fitzgerald has hired very pricey attorneys to say what changed uh -huh. from Friday to Monday. You say there's no new information. Your investigation says, I still did not know anything about it. What changed? What it's changed? He's owed is public... 40 plus million dollars on his yeah, contract. And what changed is the fact that the public got a hold of it mm -hmm. and there yeah. was a significant backlash as to the punishment. But my, that guy should be fired too. too. Yeah, and probably will be. You know what we should do? And then every time this happens, I'm like, did you really think on just because you dumped it on a Friday night that people oh. weren't going to look into this? I'm going to start a crisis management yes. for sports, for yes. college sports in general, because they okay. whoever you're using is, is a waste of money. Yes. A complete. So I actually had this idea for because I another job. I need just, another job know. and another business. <laughs> And I talked to, I talked to, because uh, my Texas Tech ties, of mm -hmm. course, I talked to Kirby Hocutt about it. And I was like, hey, like, what, is there a need for this? And he was like, absolutely. I was like, because it seems to me, and I was like, I'm not trying to be rude to, mm -hmm. you know, or dismissive of, you know, college programs and coaches and universities and all that. But it's like, you you just think you're, that, that everyone is dumb and is just yeah. going to take you at your word. And if, if anything... It's completely the opposite because if you if you get a hold of you know some information or you know and you're an opposing school or a rival school, you're going to blow that thing up. That it, that may be the hardest you know avenue or space to try to get away with something because you've got people coming after mm -hmm. you that are rivals and all. Or that you shit. think that and we're all bad at our job and won't be able to find no it shit. out anyways? Yes. So because it's a private institution, they thought that this yep. thing would not get released. If it was a public institution, there's a lot of different rules in terms of FOIA of what you would have been able to. And they just thought we're going to sweep this under the rug. And I'm like, you know how many journalists there are that cover sports? You're like, yeah, you might be Northwestern in a small program. Like, all of this is eventually going to come out. You know what you should have done? You should have come out Friday. And if you didn't want to fire the guy, then you say, you know, based on the 17 years of upstanding support and a spotless record, we've decided to suspend Pat Fitzgerald for a year. He should have been held accountable. He should have known what was going on in this locker room, but blah, 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 blah. Here is the report, da, 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 da. And then it would have been done. Okay, and then two, though, and how, you know, and I don't know Pat Fitzgerald, but how arrogant to think that shit that goes on in his locker room is going to stay there. Yeah. Period. Like, you, you can say that, and, it's, it, and maybe there was a time when that was, that was the case, but now with the transfer portal, guys are bitter and leaving, and they're not afraid to talk, and they can screenshot and 
you know, take photos, all that kind of stuff. It's, you can't, shit you used to be able to get away with, you cannot get away no. with anymore. But it's Whether like, it, it, it doesn't matter in, in life, yeah. period, in general. But you've been in a place, and this is not an excuse, but you've been in a place 17 years, and this is how you always done it, and this is how the group did it 17 years ago. So you just, like, it, people don't, it takes something to make a yep. shift. And maybe this makes a shift in other college locker rooms. I don't know how prevalent it is. The details that were in there were gross and are, that is not even what hazing is. You know, if you want to carry snacks with a pink backpack out to the bullpen, I got no problem with it. Right. What that was, was beyond, like, hazing is supposed to be some sort of team bonding. That was anything but, if you read the details of it. Um and I don't know how prevalent this kind of stuff is in other college locker rooms, but I'll tell you what, like they're going to wake up and be, yeah. realize because he did get a lot of support. Like 99% of the players that came out had positive, you know, reactions to being a player at Northwestern, but there's a 1% there that didn't. Right. And yeah, that 99% is going to try and stick up for their coach because they still want him to be around. But that 1% can get very vocal if they don't feel supportive or they feel harassed. Well, or- yeah. Well, it's just like, I mean, even like in my time covering baseball. So like when we, when I first started covering the Rangers 20 years ago, they would still do the rookie dress up and they would make them get out. And do they not do that anymore? So they do, but it's totally different slant. So before it was like, I mean, Joey Gallo was wearing a fucking diaper like, <laughs> with no other clothes, just a like a, a diaper. Yeah. Um, and you know, they're all wearing like, you know, kind of like scantily clad, like stuff. And then I remember one year we were like in going, we were playing in Oakland. And so we're staying in San Francisco. And so they drop them off like two blocks away and make them walk to the hotel, finish walking to the hotel. Now it's like they do rookie dress up, but it's more like Like a costume. Yes. Like Like Super Mario Brothers. Yes. Yes. So it's like that. So where it's not like degrading or anything like that. I mean, it's just, it's It's fun. Right. And the, the, it, you know, stuff like that evolves and that it's probably good. Right. I mean, and two, just even in baseball, like it's just so different, like the rite of passage and all that kind of stuff to where, you know, you kind of had to, you know, earn, I remember like Robbie Ross one day was late and they like, they cut his, cut his clothes. Like they just cut them up. Like, and that would never happen. Mm -hmm. And now the whole like idea, at, at least in our clubhouse has shifted and like I would talk to Marcus Simeon about it, and Marcus is like, it's hard enough to make it in this fucking league. Like, it's hard enough yeah. to be in the big leagues. We're, the last thing we're trying to do is add to that to make yeah. it more difficult on guys. Yeah. We want them to feel as comfortable as possible. Whereas before, it was you're a rookie, yeah, you better you know just mind your p's and q's, stay quiet, you know, follow the rules, do the shit we say, all that kind of stuff. And now it's just totally yeah. different to where they're like, it, it's just, it's, it, like you said, it's just a shift that's happened over time. And, you know, I mean, I, I, I can see both sides of it. Like I do think some of those rookie things were funny and, but, but you can't, then it's a slippery slope. It is. Start yeah. I do have a funny story. So the Padres would do the same thing. Yeah. The rookie dress up and, and ours was always the last road trip yep. of the year. So I was going on that road trip. We were at a home. It was a getaway day. And so we're sitting there getting post-game interviews, and I leave, and I see a fiancé of one of the rookies. And she looks at me, and she's like, hey, have, I don't even remember the, who, the name. And he's like, hey, have you seen so-and-so? Is he dressed up yet? And in my mind, <laughs> he's so normal. I was like, no, he's not dressed yet. He just got out of the shower. Uh-uh. And I'm like, <laughs> why did I just stop saying that? Like, oh, my, what did she say? She like, was like, okay. And then I walked, and I'm like, why did you just say Why that? Say but that? like you're in a locker room I all know, the time. That I becomes know. like not weird to uh, say. Okay, but you're just so like this this, no. this is one of my most embarrassing moments in of all of my career. So when when we when you in the old ballpark when you walk into the Rangers clubhouse, you know it's you can kind of survey the whole room. And Robinson Chirinos' locker was when you walk in, and it was directly to the to the right. And I, I, that night it was post game and we were, I was in a hurry trying to find, get whoever I needed to get. It wasn't Robinson or whatever. And so, you know, p- first of all, post game locker rooms fucking suck. Terrible. Awful. Terrible. Pre game is fine, but post game, you know, everyone, as soon as they get off the field is going to take a shower. Then they are going to their locker to get dressed. It's just, it's fucking awkward. I don't like pre game either. Cause it's you're just like waiting pre-game, there. Some guys there. are like playing oh, cards and you're just like, I don't want to yeah. bother. Like, right. It's, 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 it's so, so weird. It's all awkward. It's yeah. just so awkward, but I'll take pre game all day over post game. It's just like, it's fucking, it's awful. Cause you're just, you don't know where to look. You're it's, yeah. it's awful. 
Anyway, so I go into the clubhouse and I'm like, you know, looking for whoever I need and I can't, I'm like surveying the room and I look at Robinson Chirinos and he has no clothes on and I, my eyes went <laughs> and then they went up. I wasn't trying to lie. I don't need it. I was yeah. like, ah. So I looked at him and I was like, ah. And I just like, kept, like I just went and I finished doing my job and getting the interviews I needed. And then I went to his locker after and I was like, Robbie, I am so sorry. He was like, Emmy, it's okay. It's okay. And I was like, I looked at your penis. I'm so sorry. Like I, I'm also, so can, embarrassed. Can, he was like, Emmy, it's okay. Yeah. It's not a big deal. And I was like, I am mortified right now. Like I am mortified. That I, because it was just that, yeah. and it's like, you can't, I couldn't you're like, help. you're like so focused on not looking at the like, what do I do with my it. eyes? I couldn't help it. I, it, I, it just went down and then it went up and I just was like, ah, and it was the most, oh, it was it, like, I get, it uh, is so, like, like I being in that locker room is so it. awkward. Well, and it's, I mean, it's fucking Robinson it's just, Chirinos. Like, yeah. he's like the nicest yeah. human on the planet. Like, I'm not. Was it? And I was like, I am so sorry. I didn't yeah. mean to. And he was like, Emmy, it's okay. It's okay. And I was like, oh my God. Oh, I like how they all call you Emmy. Uh, yeah, Emmy, it's okay. And I was like, oh my God, I'm so embarrassed. Um, but he was, if, if it was yeah. going to happen with anyone, I'm glad it happened with Robinson Sugar. There was a joke going around when I first got uh, to the Padres because my husband's Ecuadorian that there was this thought that I spoke Spanish. Oh. And I just let them all believe that. Okay. And um, Andrew Kashner was one of our pitchers. Oh, he, I know Andrew. Yeah, he had told everyone, he goes, don't talk about Chris in Spanish in front of her because she knows Spanish. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I do. And so for the entire first season, they all thought that I spoke Spanish. And then it somehow it got caught on that I didn't. And so we're at spring training the next year. And I don't remember who it was. Someone was down on the field and waved at me and said something in Spanish. And so I was like, Hey! And one of the East, Hola. <laughs> so one of the super reporters next to me was like, "Do you know what he just said?" And I was like, "No." And he goes, "He said, hey, dumb blonde.'" And then I was like, "Hey!" <laughs> and so that's how I got caught. But they were like, "Wait a second, you don't know Spanish?" I was like, uh, "Upiquito, <laughs> hey, dumb blonde." Oh my god, that is hilarious. Uh, oh gosh, so many embarrassing stories. That's what it's so funny. I forgot about that story for a while. About Robinson and, um, and now you're like now I'm really happy. Oh my god, it's like it's, it's like flashbacks. But when people ask me, do, do they ask you? People ask you like when you're doing something like, what's your most embarrassing? And you're like, oh, I can't think of anyone in the oh, stories. My, but now I'm like, oh, mine was so I've I've worked with Dick Stockton, Dick Emberg, and Dick Vitale, like a lot of a lot of dicks. <laughs> yes. So I'm I was with Dick Emberg in San Diego and I work in basketball with Dick Vitale. Wonderful person. I'm having to do this story about how he got inducted. Do you think they would they, like they just keep rolling with Dick? <laughs> like they, they're all in their 80s. Apparently everyone thought like back in the day, fun. like my name's Richard, but I just want to be called Dick. I just want to be a dick. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm doing this report on how he was being inducted into another Hall of Fame. And I like said, which Dick was this? this was Vitel. Okay. But on air, I said Dick Emberg. And my producer was like, you just said Emberg. Because I'd worked with him for like 300 games. And I was like, my apologies. I mean, Dick Vitel. And I'm like trying to make a joke about it. Oh, no. And I go, oh, no. I mean, there are a lot of dicks in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> and my producer so many was like dying <laughs> If I hear. There are a lot of dicks. <laughs> and then my boss oh, calls me. There's a lot of dicks in the Hall of Fame. Oh. I was like, Richards. There's a lot of Richards. Oh, my God. That's what I mean. There's just so much room for <laughs> error with the name Dick. <laughs> and with Please, a lot I'm of dicks. Desired. Please. I'm Dick sorry. Stockton. <laughs> yes. So when I was I, so I, I was doing Spurs pre and post game. <laughs> And Dick, I remember like when I tossed to Dick Stockton for the first time and I was like, this is so fucking cool. And all I did, like we had like pre-talk or whatever. And I was like, oh my God, your wife is my hero. And he's like, oh, well, nice to meet you too, Emily. And I was like, <laughs> sorry. Like, I mean, Leslie Visser is yeah. fucking, like that was to me, she was, the first, yeah. she was it. Like that was, you know, and I was like, oh my God, I'm talking about Leslie Visser's husband. And I'm like, I wonder how much, how often he gets that. Like, yeah, you know, yeah, you're cool. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, yeah. thanks. Yeah. You're cool. It's like I'm a Hall of Famer. But yeah, exactly. But I really want to talk about your wife. <laughs> um, okay. Good, funny, embarrassing stories. Okay. We got what's on your feed coming up. Last segment. Um, 
we've got to talk about Athletic Greens, who is a new sponsor to our little program. Uh, our next partner, of course, AG1, as they're known, the daily foundational nutrition supplement that supports whole body health. Um, so I've just started drinking these Athletic Greens. They come in these little cute little pouches where I can just take a bottled water and pour it in. I drink it after, you know, kind of after my morning coffee when I need a little bit of a, a pick me up. And I think the main thing for me as far as drinking AG1 is that I don't, I'm not real good all the time about getting my greens in and my, my vegetables kind of like Chris's husband. And so for me, this is kind of like, okay, I can check this off my list. I've fed my body with some healthy nutrition, um, that tastes good and it, I can do it on the go. It's a total easy, no brainer thing to do to where you can kind of just check that off your list. You know, that you're getting the, the nutrients that you need in your body. So it, it's helpful with your gut. Um, everybody's always talking about gut health and how important that is. Uh, AG1 is definitely helping with my gut health. And like I said, just helping me check out that box of knowing that I'm getting the nutrients that we need. It helps you build your health foundation first. Works from the inside, of course, because you're drinking it. Um, so for all the moms out there, you know, we can be busy. If you're looking for self-care that is quick and easy, find AG1, try it today and get a free one year supply of vitamin D and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. That's what I'm talking about. Those little travel packs. They are amaze balls. So go to drink AG1.com slash mom game. That's a G one dot. No, it's not AG1. It's drink AG1.com slash mom game. Check it out. Get you some AG1, get you some athletic greens in your belly. It's easy and good for you. Okay, so what's on your feed? My feed, okay, are you on threads? So I signed up the day that everyone else did. Oh, I was like so at dinner. Exhausting. I was at dinner and then like every, I saw this, everyone on Instagram and like posted a thread. I was like, what is this? And then one of my friends was like, no, it's the new thing. So I was like, oh. I signed up, I put one thread and I haven't opened it since. Okay. Do we have to do that? So what social medias are you on? Like, because I feel like we're kind of like a little, I mean, you're not as old as me, but we're a little bit of Same. dinosaur-y. Like as far yeah. as we, ha we know we have to do it, but we didn't start in this business where social media was a thing. And yeah. so, and then it became a thing. And then I'm, I've just been basically kicking and screaming ever since. I know, but like, you're very good at like building a brand. Like you're like back when we started, there wasn't like a brand around reporters are dry right. like you're good about that like right you, my like, brand is that I'm a shit show <laughs> like it's just, you know awesome. I'm always like I post my kids because my kids are cute and I'm not so you know like just why not uh I am on Facebook privately like as like okay my private name like my friends like not like a public I think I am on there but I don't ever okay. built that thing years ago but also like Facebook started when I was in college so it that, a big deal. yeah it was like the first thing I'm on Twitter more of like from a news aspect. Like yep. that's where I get all my breaking news. Like when you're doing radio and you want to find out like things that are going on. Like yesterday where I was on ESPN radio, the Pat Fitzgerald thing broke. I found out from Twitter. Instagram is probably what I'm on the most yeah. in terms of um, content that I put out. Like I don't tweet a ton, but I look at a bunch of tweets. Okay, same. Um, and then I put out a lot more. And I'm trying to be better about it. Like I'm not, I don't like putting up a selfie, but like, I know, you know what's crazy? I know, I is know. those things get likes. I know. And so, what's, I hate them so bad. What's been nice is like in Omaha, we had an ESPN professional photographer was there. Yeah. So he went around and he like gave me cool photos. Yeah. And so those things, I try to be better. Like we had some fun, Mike Monaco, who was our play-by-play -play up in Omaha, like doing a recap, like those kind of funny things. I post a lot about my kids. I know. I do struggle with the the whole, hey, take a pic. I, it's so awkward. Like, yes. like if hey, I went, that? I know, if I like went up to my husband, we've talked about this, Julie and I have. <sighs> if I went up to my husband and be like, hey, honey, will you take a, will you? Oh my God, he would die. A, my husband would be like, and, and I'll be filing for divorce tomorrow. Yes. Like, who are you? What yeah. are we doing? Um, I just get, I mean, like I, I break out in hives asking someone to take a picture of me, especially by, by myself. Like, 
like I take one usually at the beginning of every season, at the end of every season. And like if I literally will start sweating and be like, so would you can I do, take a picture yeah. of me? And then I'm like, I don't know what to do with my hands. What's I really don't... nice is if you have like, if I'm on the road with a producer, yeah. like for Final Four, I have a bunch of pictures because she takes them while I'm reporting. Right. And then I'm like, that's perfect. I don't have to sit there awkwardly smiling yes. at the camera, which but I'm not it, good but at. But so is she just taking them for you or yes. do you ask? So she's no. just doing it unsolicited. Because she knows that like you want, yeah. So like, and that's what I really wish, honestly, like the, <laughs> as we joke about Dick Vitale, like why I love him, because he's obsessed with photos. He and is. so every time we cover or we go to a game, he wants a photo. And like we interview and are around really cool people. Yeah. And one day I want to be like, have proof of it. Yeah. I covered Pat Summit for seven years. I don't have a single photo. Seriously? Yeah. And that bumps me out because I was never like, let's take a picture. Yeah. You know what's funny? I did. I, Dick Vitale came to Lubbock when, when Bobby Knight and um, was there. And I asked to take a picture with him. Yeah. And I got it blown up into an uh, 8 by 10. My hair is so ridiculous. <laughs> but I have a photo album at my house that's all like my job, work mm-hmm. stuff. And Dick Vite, it's the first picture, oh. 8 by 10, just in this, like the first thing when yeah. you open the photo album is a, is a picture. With so he, like I have pictures with all like, you know, Bill Self and, you know, Roy Williams yeah. and all these people because he's like, let's all take a picture. He's in all of them, right. but at least I have that to show my kids. And if people take pictures while I'm working. So I have a picture of me interviewing Nick Saban when I was pregnant with Landon. Oh, And cool. I thought it'd be cool to be like, hey, look at all the places you came with me. Right. Kind of thing. Yeah. No, that's. But not me like. Hey. I know, I know, I know, I know. I just get so weirded out by it, and I and I like I respect people who don't have an issue with it. Like the girl yeah. who Leslie McCaslin, who does yeah. uh, fills in for me when I'm on you know gone or on the road or when I don't make a road trip. And she like she posted from she went to Boston and Washington five games. She got more pictures like of her like in yeah. the element than I than I have my the. But like maybe the last two and, seasons. And well, and there's an entire platform there for clothes and everything. It's no just like question. I don't have. But like, I, I'm always like, who's taking these pictures? And like, do, do, am I gonna have to ask someone? It's just no. so weird. And then, like I said, even if I ask someone to take a picture, I don't know what to do with myself. <laughs> like I don't know. Like I'm like, oh, it was like, what do I? Do? <laughs> what do I do my with hands? My do I put them on my hips? Yeah. Like that's ridiculous. You like, can't do that. Like one, awkward. Like, look to the side. Right, I'm like, laughing. Ah, it's so awkward. It's so awkward to me. Like, I just am not, I don't like looking at pictures of myself. So, I mean, every once in a while, like someone will send me like a candid photo or something like that and I'll post that. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, I like that. Yeah. Um, you know, I like, cause it's, it's, I don't know. It's, it's me just... in, in action during my job. It's funny you say that about like your husband, like mine would never do that. Oh my but gosh. we, I have a friend of ours who's a couple in the business and like they went on a vacation recently and like they all are posting these stories of like her walking up the stairs in a bikini. And I'm like, are you just telling your boyfriend to be like, Hey, take this picture. I'm like, I can't do that. No. No. He would look at me and be like, oh, I was in a thing for Texas Monthly. They did this thing called like Electric Women. And it was me uh, like a day in the life of cover, uh, like driving around a BMW and like it was for a BMW electric car. And it was the kids. And it was actually really cool. But he was like, what are we doing here? We're in a commercial now. Uh-uh. And I was like, I mean, I don't know. They asked me to do it. And it's I fun. I know. He's like, I thought you were a journalist. I, and I was like. I mean, no. this is what it's branding. This is what it is now. <laughs> Everyone's getting fired, okay? I'm I just, know. I'm just, saying, just trying to keep my job. No. Please. Just, Listen, we're old, okay? And we I need know. Botox. We're not the rest Seriously. of everybody else. I know. We got to do things that we didn't do 20 years ago. I know. Ago and that's the kind of the thing where I'm at. Like, I'm, I do it as a necessity as yeah. far as the posting. Like, I feel like I need to kind of, you know, who I feel like does a really good job with balancing all of it. And she fucking kills it. Like, as far as the branding and the con julia morales with the oh Astros. yeah she she's got it she's got it figured yeah. out like the ratio of family to job and i it's just it doesn't yeah. ever seem like over did you know uh varying. she's now laura rutledge but she's yeah, yeah, laura yeah. mckeeman when she yeah. was with the padres um she's the same way yeah like, she has a really good balance of and listen she's gorgeous so she takes pictures yeah. and selfies and she looks amazing in them but it's also a balance of home and life and yeah. i'm like I feel like Julia does it. I told her that recently. I was like, you do a really good job of like, you know, and she uses it to her advantage. I mean, she, people want to, brands want to work with her and all that kind of stuff. And I mean, I have those, you know, here and there, 
But I, you, you know what I mean? It's like, if you want to partner with me, it's like, you got to be ready for this whole fucking yeah. shit show. Like, what are you talking about? I saw you, you on a I GMC mean? commercial while I'm on this treadmill today. I know, I know. But so Charles, who <laughs> is the GM of that, of that dealership, he knows I'm a disaster and he's <laughs> totally fine with it. So we find these partners like bottled over. They're cool. <laughs> yeah. Because they, they know By the we're way, a disaster. Perfect partner because I'm not taking my four year old to a liquor store. If you ever like taken like a top, you're like, don't touch anything. <laughs> it will set off a domino of broken shit yes. everywhere. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I know. It's just, I just, so I just, when the threads thing came out, I was like, so you didn't get on it? No, I'm not. I don't even know how. I don't. Is it a different well, app? Well, here, no, it is a different app. But here's the other thing that's that's weird. You automatically, when you sign up, it can follow all the people that you follow on Instagram. But it's built like a Twitter. And I'm like, the people I follow on Instagram are like home fashion people. I don't really right. care to see like what their thread is or like right. what a tweet would be if you... Like, I want to see, like, what rug did you buy? Right. Yeah. <laughs> Where are my Amazon Prime deals? I like, know. that's what I'm following. No, I don't. I think I'm going to try. But I did this with Twitter. Like, I, I remember being on the Ben and Skin show, and they were on the ticket in, on the weekends. And they were asking about, what do you think about Twitter? I was like, oh, I think it'll be dead in two years. And then fucking now it's nowhere. I mean, it's not going anywhere. No. Or maybe it is. Maybe, maybe. I don't, know. I don't know. I just was like, I can only handle so many social media yeah. apps. Like, I'm not on Snapchat, but, like, the... Not on Speaking of Gateway, they want me, they're like, so I'm starting to do some social media for them. And they're like, we want you to do a TikTok. I'm like, well, I'm not on TikTok. And I don't know how to do the TikToks. So <laughs> you can either teach me. Do I get a dance? Or, no, I'm not, there will be no dancing. But I'm like, I can't, I mean, even yeah. my kids. So like, I let my kids get on this Be Real. Have you heard of I've this heard one? Of that. I'm not on it, but. So I, but I, we, my, I monitor closely who, it's like, you know, our family and yeah. close friends and all that kind of stuff. Where basically it sends you an alert. And whatever you're doing, you're supposed to take a picture and post it at that very moment in time. And so I, I'm like, okay. And they're like, mom, you should get on Be Real. I'm like, I'm out. I can't. There's no, I don't, my brain doesn't have enough capacity for any more social media apps. I like it if it's not about me. So I'm on the media board for Coaches versus Cancer, which is an American Cancer Society subset. And it's golf tournaments and stuff for, it's mainly basketball coaches. So they were like, hey, we'd like you to come. We need more of a social media influence to show what these golf tournaments are like. Do you want to come to Vegas and do Instagram for Coaches versus Cancer Instagram handle? And I was like, uh, sign yeah. me up. Like, I'm all being, like, putting up other content on someone sure. else's thing right. as long as it's not selfies of me. I'll take fun stuff of everybody else. Right. As long, there's just, there's We grew up in an era of journalism where it was not – me it was not about right. me it was about everyone else and there that has shifted and there is a keeping up with what this is in order to do that it has absolutely shifted yeah, yeah. no that's a great point you're right I mean it just we didn't and I don't I, anymore I don't I gotta ask this today if I consider myself a journalist I don't anymore yeah. I think there was a time when I was but now I don't I mean I don't I mean it's I'm not looking to break anything um except for I don't know I don't what would I break I don't know a wine glass. Um, <laughs> so anyway, but yeah, I just it, it there is it's definitely a shift, and it's I'm just not I'm just, <laughs> just not, not there. I'm just not there. I'm not there. Yeah. I mean, like I, I I wish someone someone should literally film me trying to take a picture by myself. <laughs> you one time posted like the amount of like <laughs> <laughs> the w with yes the, when I was trying to take camera. a selfie, and it's literally eighty five pictures, <laughs> and I don't like any of them. Like, we'll take pictures for the show. We'll take pictures. I'm like, I don't, they're like, you want to see it? I'm like, oh, no, no, I don't want to see no, it. No, because I'm not going to like it anyway. So what's going to happen is, so Julia, this has happened to Julia a million times, where I'll be like, no, no, I don't want to see it. And then she'll post one. I'm like, that's the one you fucking picked? And she's like, she said you didn't want to see it. And I'm like, I don't, but could you pick a better one of me? And she's like, I mean, what the fuck? What, do I, what yeah. am I supposed to do Can with we you? have lighting in a makeup like, situation? Yeah, and I'm like, no, it's not okay. <laughs> Um, okay. Anything else you want to talk about, promote, um, besides the fuck you fours? Um, <laughs> Someone say a prayer for my household as my seven-year-old is taken over. I know. At some point, like, they get along, maybe, the boy and the girl? Um, I, I can't speak to that at this point in time, because we're 12. Wait, wait till they're 18. Yeah, we're 12 and 10, and they're still fighting. Like, mm. it's unbelievable. Am I the, I uh, know, oh. 20, am I, no. am I the only person that's, like, Excited for school to start? No. Okay. No. Everyone's like, oh, the summer's almost over. I'm like, thank God. <laughs> no, I know. We do better on a routine. Structure. And I get up early anyway, so yeah. I don't really care that we're getting up at 7 a.m. to go to school because you know why? Someone is teaching you things right. that I can't teach you. Right. God bless teachers, by the God way. God bless. bless. 
teachers. God bless teachers. And all the dicks out there. <laughs> Vital, Enberg, Stockton, all, all of, of you. We love you. All. <laughs> um, okay. All right. Thank you so much for coming in um, and being my co host today. You're the best. Uh, you know the drill at the end. You look into your camera, which is right there. I'm going to look into my camera. We're going to throw up the peace oh, signs. We're going to say, Mom, game out. On the count of three. One, two, three. Mom, game, game out. Out. out.